Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome back. I'm Ryan Shrout with Intel, joined by my good buddy, Tap. I'm Tom Peterson. And we are here today to continue talking about all the greatness that we are bringing to the market with Intel Arc Lots of graphics. Good stuff. Lots of good stuff. Uh, you know, we've talked about XCSS, we've talked about ray tracing. Today, we're going to talk about clocks, do an overclocking demo. Those are always fun. Oh, my God. Little, what could go uh, wrong? The, uh, you know, live wrong? demos always work out well. Uh, and of course, we're going to dive into the Intel card itself, this limited edition yeah, card. Yeah, limited have, edition. It's pretty excited. I know, uh, hopefully, everybody's heard about it. It's card Linus loved a lot. Limited edition is the brand name of the card that we're building ourselves and taking to market directly. It's going to be available at launch. So we're going we're gonna to virtually tear one apart and show you what's uh, what's on the inside, too. But first, I think let's, let's dive in and talk a little bit of background about clocks before okay. we dive into overclock. Okay. So, you know, uh, you know that loads change in graphics, right? There's sometimes when the GPU is busy, sometimes when it's not. And that load changing uh, gives us an opportunity to get better performance by raising or lowering clocks. Okay. So the way to think about it is there's this curve here. And it's a, a relationship between frequency and voltage. And when you have a light load, for example, you might actually run pretty high up on the curve. And when you have a heavy load, you might run very low on the curve. So what I'm showing you here is two histograms. The first histogram is lower, and that's saying, hey, when I have a heavy workload, my clocks are going to tend to be lower on this curve. And the second dot is when I have a lighter workload, my my, distribu my distribution is yeah. going to tend to be higher. Now, those workloads, you know, we're, we're talking about gaming products here. This could be different games, different or it levels, could be different, different scenes games, in a game, different right? effects, right? It's okay. really a question. When I say light and heavy, it's per clock how much energy is consumed by the GPU. Okay. And that can be different based on resolution or based on settings. It's very complicated. Stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, the interesting part is that with all this dynamic uh, clocking going on, how do you talk about your chip? Right. Because it's it's got... It's about your specs. There's statistics here, yeah. right? So yeah. the way we're going to do it is we're actually going to look at a typical workload, and we're going to look at the distribution of clocks for a typical workload on our worst case chip in mm. the entire bucket of chips that we're making. And whatever that clock is, median, that's going to be our graphics clock. And graphics clock is the spec that defines the performance of your of your part, basically. Okay. Right? So higher graphics clocks are going to mean higher performance. And it's really all this statistical thing about where does my clock tend to run. Now, the graphics clock does not mean your GPU runs at that all the time. No. Sometimes you might be higher than that. Sometimes you might be Exactly. Lower. It's really meant to say, listen, uh, you're going to get this clock or higher 50% uh, of the time running a typical workload if you're unlucky and get a very slow chip. If you're getting a, a, a better chip or a faster chip, you're going to tend to run higher than graphics clock. Okay. Now, um, that's just the beginning because we have a lot of differentiation and users want to overclock and AICs want to create custom SKUs. So the way we do that is by manipulating the constraints around graphics clock. Yeah. So the first thing you can do is you can add more power. So in your design, if you build a, a bigger voltage regulator or you, you're willing to run a little bit hotter, a little bit louder, if you're overclocking, you can slide our power slider up and you get a higher distribution of clocks and more performance. Okay. More, more headroom for uh, the GPU to go a little bit higher on exactly. that. Exactly. You're basically telling okay. our GPU, listen, you're designed to run one power bucket, but I'm telling you right now, go ahead and run a higher power bucket yeah. and you're going to get a higher distribution of clocks. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Another way to do this is a little bit more complicated. What we're doing is we're actually overclocking. And the way that works on Intel is that we shift our entire VF curve up, and effectively, you'll get a higher clock at every voltage. Now, this doesn't work all the time. It doesn't work across all parts, but that's the nature of overclocking, right? You're, you're kind of you're <laughs> right. looking for the faster stuff that you can get by recovering margin that Intel may have built into the chip. It, what do you mean by margin? Margin is like, how safe do I have to be? We're, we're building lots and lots of chips. They're going into lots of different environments. So we have to be very conservative with this curve that's the relationship between frequency and voltage. Yeah. Now, if you're an end user, you can experiment. You can like try different things. And AICs, our board partners, can search for fast parts, and they can build them into these custom SKUs. So when you're recovering margin, what you're basically doing is saying, I know what part I have, and I'm going to push it to the limit to get that extra performance. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Love it.
Yeah, so all of this is made available through software from Intel. We have a product called Arc Control, and you can see in this picture, we expose lots of different parameters. There's these tiles that are showing you real-time monitoring information, but on the right-hand side is a bunch of switches and dials that allow you to do exactly what I talked about. You can raise the performance slider, which is pushing the voltage curve up, mm -hmm. or you can add power, which will kind of push your distribution up to the right and get higher clocks. Okay. Now, uh, you can also see on this slide, we have real-time telemetry, which is an overlay. So while you're playing a game, you can look at all this stuff. It's actually pretty cool to interact. Yeah, that's cool. We've got a version you can keep always up in the top right-hand corner. Yep. You can bring up the full uh, display and look at you know, real-time. Yeah, you can look at graphs. Well. You can kind of yeah. check it all out. The way I look at this is it's just a, just a door into what's going on inside your GPU. And for some people, that's a playground. You want to get in there and start <laughs> you know, tweaking things. Other people, it's like, eh, it's kind of cool to know that it's doing its thing, but right. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know what would be better than looking at the, these pictures and slides? I do. Let's take a look at a demo of uh, <laughs> doing some actual overclocking on these products. I'm here. in. Let's nothing, go. Nothing can go wrong. All right, Ryan. We're here with Hitman 3. Great game. It's a great game. You great crawl series. around, covert, little stuff going on. Covert out for everybody. That's right. You know, but I, I, it's just fun for me. Call that a character flaw. I don't know. <laughs> but now we're all about overclocking. So we're at 91 FPS right now. I'm going to pull up our, our little telemetry with an Alt-O. Oh, okay. Okay, and you can see this is real-time performance telemetry. Our clock is at 2.4 gigahertz right now. Great. We're running at 997 Quite a bit millivolts. higher than the 2050 it is. rated. It, it is, and you might ask, why is that? Why is that? Tom? Well, it's because, um, you know, we talked about our conservative methodology. So graphics clock is a guarantee across all parts, typical environment. So on this particular a game, in this particular moment, on that particular silicon, we're getting a little higher clock. 2400 is not... That's surprising, and I think a lot of people are going to see 2.4 gigahertz. Okay. Yeah. Worth noting, this is on an Intel Arc A750 it is. edition, not the RGB A770, but uh, uh, it's a 750. Yep. All right. So let's go into the scene, and we're going to run forward. I'm not going to get interacting with anybody. I'm just going to go take a look at this burning pile in this can right here. Okay. And we're right around 90-ish. Let's 93. Let's get a nice 90. There's 90. Okay, 90, 89, damn, 90, 90 FPS. That's good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start overclocking. You bring that up with an Alt-I. And th this is our control, and you can see right away, we've got some more tiles. These are telling you the real-time telemetry. Mm -hmm. But really, uh, what I should have done is I should have hit Escape to kind of freeze the game. Yeah. So Alt-I, and now we're gonna go ahead and come to the configure. When you hit configure, you're gonna get all these sliders. And the sliders are basically the controls of that, that chart I showed you. Mm -hmm. uh, the performance boost slider shifts the curve up, voltage offset adds some extra voltage points that we'll talk about, and the power limit increases the power budget so you can get higher distributions. Okay. Now to start, we're going to do GPU performance boost first, and I like to start small, so let's just add like 20. Okay, that, okay. That, that's all pretty right, safe, right? right? This right. is, as by the way, with all overclocking, with all vendors, it's best effort, no guarantee anything good's going to happen. Sure. But I think it is. We're at 2.4 gigahertz right now, I'm going to hit apply, boom, 2450, Fresh 2500 free performance right out of the get-go. Let's go Not back bad. and look at the game. So a couple of escapes. And now we're at still 90, 89-ish, 90, so not much has changed. Okay. Okay. A okay. little, little boost, but not much. Let's go back I in. I saw 91 flicker. You saw 91? Yeah. All right, I'll take it. All right, so that's not enough. No. We need more. We need more. 20 goes to like 30. Okay, 30, 31. I'm going to hit apply. <laughs> 2,500 goes to 2,500. 2,500. Huh, okay. It's not doing anything. 2,550 uh, is 2,550 a little, a little bit. bit, but still not what I want. I, we're right around 91 FPS. I say we need to take the next big hammer out. Yeah, I mean, if you look, it's the GPU power limit sliders listed at 190. Yep. GPU power is 190. Why, what, what's the 190 represent? Well, the 190 is our GPU power, not the total board power. So ah, okay. just the GPU right now is consuming around 190 watts. Okay. On this SKU, on this board, we're going to allow that power to go up to 228. But the truth is, it's totally safe. You know, the, the parts characterize for more power, the boards characterize for more power. Okay. This is all about acoustics and maintaining good thermals. But when you're overclocking, maybe you don't care so much. So let's go okay. ahead and raise that up to 228. You ready? Let's do it. Here we go. 2450 goes to 2590. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And somewhat. it's holding there pretty soon. 206 stable. watts, 2590. Yeah, yeah. Let's go take a look at the game. So, okay, we're at 94 FPS. Okay. 93, 94. I'm okay with that. We're, yeah. we're starting to see a, a nice good. rise. Let's get let's 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 not give up though. All right. We're gonna keep going. A little bit more. All right. We can go a little bit. Oh, I didn't hit escape. Sorry. Let me come back. Uh, uh, escape and then all I. Okay. Now here we go. So we're looking at 31 right now. 
I say we can go, go up a little, a bit, little more. bit more. A little bit more. 35 maybe. Okay, we're at 2.59. Now we're at 2.7. Uh, didn't do much. Right? So I think what's mm. happening here, Ryan, is we're probably close to the end of our VF curve. Okay. And to get that next step, what we need to do is open up a few more voltage points. And you do that with the voltage slider. Now, I, I think that people need to understand the voltage slider is different than everything else. If you start messing with the voltage slider, what you're doing is allowing the GPU to run at a higher voltage, uh -huh. which will reduce the long-term reliability of your GPU. Okay. Okay, so this is the only thing that you can do that uh, is going to have some impact on how does this GPU live for forever. Got it. But in this case, I'm gonna add 35 millivolts because what the heck, we're here to have fun. We're at 2576, <laughs> I'm gonna hit apply. 2648, wow. and yeah. let's take a look at the game. 2648, 95 FPS. Everything's looking pretty good. Not well, bad. we start like 89. 89-ish, yeah, yeah, So like that's like six out of nine. So that's like it's eight to seven. Up. My up math's there. not good. Last, my math's not good. Let's see, I maybe moved it a little bit. But yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good result, right? If I come back to our, our 96, thing. free performance, uh, uh, nobody complains about. Free performance nobody is always good, about. and the overclocking in general is pretty easy to use. Yeah. All right, so. Just for you and me. Just for just, just for, for you and me. Okay, just for right. me. I think we can go higher. So. I think let's take that 35 millivolts up to 50. <laughs> okay, yeah. we're, we're not going to need this GPU tomorrow. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, adding 2648. Okay, it did go up 2676, and now we're at the 95, 2650. But I think we need to go a little bit more here. We're at 35. We're going to go to 37. 30, yeah. 37. Okay. 2678, 2650, 2719. Can we oh, can, can oh. we make that work? Is it working? It escaped a couple times. Let's see. Uh, 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 oh, 2719. Oh, 2719. <laughs> 2719 right there. You see it? Dude, that's, that's our highest ever. Good. 2719. All right. 2.7 gigahertz for a GPU is like. It's uh, not a bad deal. <laughs> and there's no like weird water cooling or anything. No, right? no. Not that that's bad, Wallace. I love water cooling, but. So let's go back. All right. Well, there you go. That was pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty impressive results. Fairly, you know, big numbers for a GPU. Big, big numbers. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. Cool. Okay, but but that was all possible because of the board that it was built on, right? Right. That design is built with extra power, extra margin. And uh, it's been, you know, a process to get this all working. So why don't we tear that thing down <laughs> and talk about what makes the limited edition board so cool? Okay. All right. So diving right in, you know, we already mentioned we have an A770 and an A750 limited edition. Mm -hmm. Limited edition does not mean that it's like here today, gone tomorrow. It's just the name of the brand effectively right. for boards that are designed and manufactured by Intel and made available directly to the public. Uh, it'll be in all the major e-tail sites and retail sites. It's going to be the board to get. Now, on the, on the one pictured here, you've got the 770. This is one with the RGB yeah. uh, inclusion in there. So that'll be cool to see how, how we've uh, uh, manufactured that. Absolutely. There's a couple versions of 770, and I think we've caused a little bit of confusion. There's a 16 gigabyte 770. There's, a, there's an 8 gigabyte 770. And both of them are going to have slightly different memory configurations. And some will have RGBs and some won't. So you'll see like a full variation in the end market. Got it. Okay. Now, the easiest way to look at this is to sort of dive into the top level outside features. First of all, it just looks cool, right? It's got this nice chamfered edges. It's got the RGB controllers in the 770 16 gig version. Obviously, uh, it's got a, a cool thermal we'll talk about a little bit. But I'd say just stepping out and looking at the thing, I'm pretty happy with where we ended up. I, I, I have yet to show the card to somebody and them not be impressed. I know. Right? It's, 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 it's unique, but not out, out, you know. That's right. Out, out of the world looking. Normally, black finish, yeah. very, very sophisticated Absolutely. looking. If you can use that normally, uh, this kind screen. of uh, cards made by the GPU manufacturers are always kind of like not great. But this is actually really cool. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. about it. Okay, so let's dig into the technical details. This is an exploded view of the graphics card. Yes. And I like to start at the front and work my way back. And you can see right off the bat, there's a really cool dual axial fan, high performance. I'll talk a little bit about what does that deliver a little bit later. Yeah. But let's just say it's super quiet and can evacuate all the heat from the graphics card efficiently. The next layer in is this uh, diffuser. And that's how we make our LEDs look good. So the big problem with LEDs is thing called hot spots. And those hot spots are difficult to hide because when you have lots of LEDs, right. this diffuser is the best I've seen at spreading that around and making things look uniform. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Then we dive into the thermals. It's sort of like one giant block. There's a giant copper 
vapor chamber yes. that contacts directly to the voltage regulators and the GPU. All one piece. All one piece. It's pretty cool. It gives us a little more pressure on those parts. And then uh, a basic flat heat pipe that allows us to have a really complete and deep fin stack made out of aluminum. So the combination of the fin stack being complete, thin uh, heat pipes, and the solid block of copper Makes so the, nice the, the flat heat pipes basically uh, allow us to have a, a larger fin stack. Exactly. The flat heat pipes, if you, if you had kind of round heat pipes, it kind of cuts into the fin stack, which yeah. reduces your overall efficiency. Okay. So this thermal, pretty cool, and it totally handles all the power that we need for A770. Got it. Lastly, let's talk about the PCB. Obviously, six VRMs means you get clean power, uh, high performance power, way way more power than you typically will need for a 770. But it's it, but it's over designed for overclocking. Yes. It's PCIe Gen yes. 4 HDMI 2.1 supported through a PCON, and uh, really overall everything you could want in a graphics card. It's got a six and an eight, and also pulls 75 watts out of PCIe. Yep. Pretty cool. All right. So with all that said, what do you get? Yeah. Uh, well, you get great performance and great acoustics. 39 dBA is the output running a typical load, and you'll see that that is effectively not quite whisper, but almost there, right? It's very, very quiet. The idea here is that we have found a balance between temperature, uh, the thermal design that we put into it, the fan noise that we're, we're comfortable with, and wanting it to be as low as possible. Absolutely. With, you know, yeah. and provide the best overall experience for our version of this product. Absolutely. Now, we didn't even talk about temperature, but if you like your temperature lower, this keeps the design cool and quiet the whole time. But on our sliders, you can also set the temperature target lower if you want, if you're really into low temperatures. Yeah. So all that's cool. Now, uh, this diffuser I want to talk a little bit more about. It's, it uses microstructures that are actually acting as tiny little light guides. On the left-hand side, you'll see a typical diffuser, and it's got still, you know, it's diffusing a little bit, but you can still see these white hot spots. Yeah. And that doesn't look as great when you're, you know, trying to make it look like smooth animating colors. Right. Right. So that's why we invested the time and the effort in this microstructures. It makes the diffuser more effectively spread the light around. Very cool. So. At the end of the day, it's not just one big block of LEDs. You can control it in four zones. There's fans, ring, back, and logo. And in advanced modes, you can even control individual LEDs. Yeah, it's it's a really cool piece of software that we have that allows you to do all that. It has some presets. It has some animations. Absolutely. Uh, it has what I affectionately call the rainbow mode. The rainbow mode's cool. Uh, well, if you want attention, it'll it'll grab it. <laughs> uh, even out of the box, just firing it up uh, and having it run kind of a, it's animated. Yeah, I think it looks good. Color scheme I really mean, nice. I've looked at a lot of LEDs over the years. It's hard to get all the colors to match, and yeah. the engineering team has done a great job here. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. All right, so let's summarize. Let's do so. What do you think? I think it's a really impressive product, right? Um, I think uh, uh, it's one, the overclocking was is impressive. Giant, right? giant. Uh, and this is this is not the only product that will come out with Intel Arc Graphics. This is our take. Of this what is our Intel take. Arc the Graphics AICs are like. going to do what they do, right? And But this particular design really kicks up, sorry, really does well uh, on overclocking, which makes me excited. It does. Yeah. And it's going to be available at launch. It will. And we'll have more to say about that very soon. So we've been doing a lot of these videos on arc.intel.com, lots of performance releases and feature discussions. We know we have more to share about price and availability and all price of that. Price and availability. We know, we know mm. you're eager to get to that. That's coming. We're eager to share it as well. It'll be very soon. Uh, but keep checking arc.intel.com for the latest information there. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.